So, I would like to start off my speech with a very quick question. What comes to your mind when you think of the word lost? Now, lost can mean a lot of different things. And right now, I can have a million different questions for a million different answers. But I can think of three simple questions that we can all relate to at this very moment. The first one is, perhaps someone here got lost into this hall? Maybe someone in the back or anyone in the front here? Well, if you have, that's okay. Second of all, did anyone here accidentally exchange it, their seats with one another? If you have done that as well right now, then that's also okay. But have you ever lost your way into life? Your path to confidence, your path to success, your self-identity as a person. If you have done that once in your life, then that is totally okay too. And perhaps maybe some, he some here have passed that phase actually. So if you have passed that phase, I want you to give a round of applause to yourself because I know that's not easy. Why? Because to understand how you got lost is to understand what life means to you. Now, we here all have different ideas on life. Some may think life is easy. Some may think life is hard. Some may think life is simple, just like me. Honestly, it's as simple as three points that make the foundation of life. Now, those points are passion, commitment, and interest. Now, with those three, you can create your stepping stones into your future that you want to build. Now, if you ask me, what if we don't have those? Well, that's okay. That's basically the reason why I'm talking to you right now. I prepared a super simple solution to your problem, ladies and gentlemen, and that comes in the form of the invisible path. What is the invisible path? Um, it's a secret. It's like the secret recipe into like KFC or something like that. So I'll save it to the end. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, buckle up into your seats as this is going to be a roller coaster ride filled with emotions. You ready? Let's begin. So, I want to first talk about me, myself, and my family. Ta da! <laughs> That's me. And I'm a 14 year old boy just living the ordinary life of a grade 8 student. Now, you might ask me, what does this 14 year old boy do? with his family? Well, it's quite complicated, you see. I am the oldest son in my main family, and I am the third generation in my family. What does that mean to me, you ask? Well, it means that I have to become a role model. I have to become the mirror in my family, someone that you have to look up to one day in the future. Is that hard? Yes, but I can do that. Why? You see, my parents always expect me to do well. But sometimes, it's not always I have to do well with them because they always wanted me to become something like doctors or something that could be useful in the future. Now, did I agree on that? It's not that I don't agree, but sometimes we also have something called personal favorites and personal dislikes, and that is my personal dislike. So, talking about my family, here is my five main family members in my team. <laughs> They are the most chaotic family in the whole wide world. <laughs> you see, this family of five here, which is consistent of my mom, my dad, my two little siblings, both one brother and one sister, and me, we all have different personalities, and that makes us unique as a person in our family. I'm going to take my brother, for example, and that's a cheeky monster you see there. <laughs> you see, my brother, it's your typical brother. He's very annoying. And yes, sometimes I can be too, too annoyed with all his things, but it's okay. That's life. <laughs> you see, he is very, very good at math. And because of that, he likes to compete in math competitions so much that he actually became a finalist in one of them. Cool, right? A six-year-old joining the final in a mathematic competition. Now, what about me? Well, um, I like games, I like foods, I like 
a lot of different things, but I don't like exercise because, you know, I'm that guy who saves energy rather than use it. And yeah, that's typical. We're human. <laughs> now, as you can see, me and my brother, we both have very similar characteristics. Me and my brother are extroverted. We are very clingy to each other. And oh man, we're competitive, especially in Mario Kart. Oh, you don't want to lose to a brother like him in Mario Kart. But we also have differences. You see, my brother, he likes math. Math is something that he confidently does because he likes it. And he joins competitions because, well, that's what he is. But me, uh, that's actually why I'm actually talking to you right now. <laughs> you see, it took me seven years. Yes, you heard me right. It took me seven whole years to find out who I am as a person. And I want you to join me on a small and quick flashback into my couple year past. So this journey began in 2015. <clears throat> Hi guys, welcome back to Rafael 2. That's usually how I intro myself in my YouTube channel. This YouTube channel of mine became something of a successor for me and it just made me more confident in doing what I like honestly in life. How confident was I with this YouTube channel? Well, it got successful because of because I, how confident I am. And because of that, as you can see here, I got a quarter, in a, million, a quarter of a million views in one of the videos. So cool, right? Anyway, let's go, go to 2018, three years later. Ta-da! This is my Instagram account. It's called It's Jack Harley. And why is it called like that? Well, it's my gaming name. And you know, it's like how we interact with each other. And I have to make myself cool. <laughs> but you see, this Instagram account, it was all just the fun, the humor, the embarrassing moments, the Fortnite moments for the OGs. Yeah, you get the point. I haven't used this Instagram for the better at that stage. That is before COVID. <sighs> COVID. And I know this is a hard topic to discuss because I believe everyone here has either lost their family member or lost in touch with their things they love. And so did I. But did that stop me? No, it actually kept me moving forward in my life. You see, now that Insta my Instagram felt useful, I used it for reviewing bobas. And yes, it's something that I like. It's something that makes me happy. And most importantly, I got fat. <laughs> That's fine. We're humans, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, as, you see, as you can see right now, it's now 2021, the year where the digital era starts to kick in within our bloods. Why? We're getting more closer to things such as mobile devices, to things such as computers, laptops, iPads, and if you can use it properly, then you can end up with something like this. I joined a couple of competitions, but unfortunately, I didn't win any of them. So instead, I got to do something like coding, which was a big step into my future. Why? This digital era is really important, and it might be super useful in the days upon us. Why? You can see here, coding is a very simple but also a very complex technique in our laptop. And we've, we can use it to the better, then it could prove very, very, very useful in the future. So I signed up for something like this. This is a international coding course. And I joined it because I wanted to improve skills on Scratch. And then there's also things such as Tongue Cable and Python that I never knew until that course. Now, I did like that course, and because I liked it a lot, they actually gave me this talent hunt exam. Now, I wasn't expecting anything, and I was going to be honest that, yeah, maybe ranking about 1,000 out of like 25,000 people who joined would probably be, yeah, such a already big thing. But I didn't expect to rank 36, yes, you heard me right, 36 among 25,000 people in Asia. Yes, that's a big thing. 
So, now that I've actually gotten all those things, I ask myself, hmm, did I finally get all those things, those three points for seven years in the waiting? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the answer is that I was able, um, uh, is that right? <laughs> actually, it is right. It's hard to say this, but coding instead became a repetition to me because I just don't know. I didn't like it. It just didn't felt like that was me as a person. And for the YouTube and Instagram, I still kept on doing it. It's just, oh man, why was it so hard? <sighs> so back to the drawing board. <laughs> That's me. And I feel really, really stressed at that moment. But no worries. One day, my heart talked to me and it said that when all hope seems lost, there's always a glimmer of hope, a spark, a light in your heart that will guide you through that moment. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I finally found the three points I was looking for in life. How? Well, remember my boba account, I mean, my boba review? Well, it basically was just 0.0001% was of all things about food. So why not did I just start with this? Food, like real food. So I reviewed food, I liked it, and my passion was finally discovered at that very moment. The passion that I finally discovered isn't this. It's cooking. Now, you might be asking me, why does a 14-year-old boy who just is an ordinary guy, likes to do such thing in the kitchen. Now, people might think this is a, such a risky activity to do, and it is, because you're dealing with knives, fires, and sharp equipment. And I ever cut my hand a couple of times, but that's not the thing. The thing is, this kept me going forward. This was the joy, the source of happiness that I was looking for over the seven years that I've been waiting. So, that is. My passion, <sighs> finally. That was a tiring experience, wasn't it? <laughs> but all right, let's remember again. So I have my passion. I have my commitment, which is inside of my passion. What about my interest? Hmm, uh, ha-ha, music. Yes, ladies and gents, music became something that was really near and dear to me. Why? Ever since when I was a little kid, I actually like playing the piano, and the piano was something that was really, really me as a person. I just touched some instruments and, you know, did some things, and yeah, there I am now. But that's not the point. The point is, I started doing things such as producing music, which technically, by what my friend means, is that you're pouring your musical flavor, you're putting all your extract, all your juices, all the seasoning into a song. And that's where I made our world. Our world is my first song that I've produced and it got great reactions from a lot of people here. And that's why I finally was able to find my driving fuel, which is my passion with the commitment plus my musical interest and that creates the driving fuel. Now what's that driving fuel? It's the fuel, it's the source of energy that just keeps me going forward, not to the right, not to the left, not to the back, forward and beyond the future. So that's all. And that's it. I found the things I wanted to find for the last seven years. Is that the end? No, it is not. Remember when I said I wanted to talk about the invisible path? Now here's the moment. So let's go back to the first question, shall we? What comes to your mind when you think of the word lost? Now, I did ask what comes to your mind, right? But I didn't ask something like, what will you do when you get lost? So to put it in a scenario, you're lost in the middle of the road where you don't know what to do, and the only thing you have is probably your mobile device. And yes, because it's the digital era, I believe we can all agree that the source of the solution is a Google map or something like Waze, a robotic map that will help you to go to point A to point B in a matter of seconds. Now, I do think this is a correct solution, but for this matter, you see, when I was finding life, I didn't have anything like a Google Map because basically Google Map was a cheat to me. Like, there, 
a cheat. And I put it in bold to make sure that it really is something that you can do in life. Why? There's no such thing, right? As such as this robotic map that will guide you from point A to point B in the matter of seconds. There's no such thing. So that's why I decided to do something else. After thinking a bit, it instead was all the source of this solution was actually from following my heart. Yes. What I think of it is if you follow a Google map, you're basically following a robotic map, a map that you basically have to just follow because it already knows where you want it to go later on in the future. But how about following your heart? You see, I've always believed that if you follow your heart, no matter how rocky the situation will be, no matter how difficult it will be later on in the future, it's all gonna matter. It really is. And I could say it right now because that's how I find it. My, sev the, my three points in life, my passion, my commitment, my interest, that was all from my heart. So I'm gonna sum this speech off with a motto that I've always used in my life. That motto is, let your heart guide you wherever you go. No matter how rocky the, the, the difficult situations ahead, no matter how hard the perseverance, sacrifices, decisions you have to make, just let it do its thing. I'm Rafael Geralt Tiawan. Thank you for listening. <laughs>